Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. In the midst of a ground troop receiving heavy hostile fire, they would desperately anticipate the advent of an A-10 Warthog for their rescue. Entering the battlefield with its iconic bird, the Warthog could instill apprehension within the enemies. While the A-10 was manufactured to play a crucial role in close air support, learning to smite enemies on the ground is challenging for newbie pilots. The U.S. Air Force utilizes cutting-edge technology to make things easier for their novice pilots using virtual reality or VR simulators. These simulators come at a cost-effective price and allow pilots to train in a risk-free environment. Trainers use the Digital Combat Simulator, or DCS, which is a commercially available simulator game, along with VR headsets to create a 3D environment for pilots. These novice training aids are proven to be more effective than traditional academic materials. In addition to the true-to-life 3D experience, pilots are offered the chance to review their 360-degree training footage, creating room for better comprehension of the mistakes they made. As the next step in the training, Pilots get hands-on experience with a full motion trainer. Despite being a conventional training method, it provides a highly realistic environment as it simulates responses to the pilot's inputs. This helps newbie pilots understand flight dynamics and the aircraft's responsiveness to specific inputs. With the completion of all simulator training and academic instructions, pilots proceed through the training pipeline to fly real-world sorties. Flying on a sortie requires four to six hours of pre-flight preparation. Pilots attend briefings, where they receive intelligence and mission planning, along with weather updates. Apart from that, they are briefed on special training objectives to be achieved during the sortie. During the sorties, pilots perform basic flight maneuvers as the first phase of their flight training. Starting from takeoff and landing, pilots fly banking, rolling, and turning to acquaint themselves with the aircraft. This is the stage where pilots hone their fundamental skills while understanding the limitations of that particular aircraft. The more sorties a pilot flies, the better he understands the flying characteristics of the aircraft, which could play a crucial role in combat scenarios. In addition, pilots build confidence while flying the aircraft, gradually preparing them to undertake the next echelon of their training. After gaining much exposure to the idiosyncrasies of the A-10 during their training sorties with basic flight maneuvers, pilots are ready to embrace the next challenge down the line.
While the A-10 was designed with close air support as its primary role, newbie pilots must master all the maneuvers integral to these missions. While any aviation enthusiast adores the iconic from the firing GAU-8 Avenger autocannon, a trainee pilot has to put in an exceptional level of effort to gain proficiency in gun usage and strafing runs. While the A-10 was built around the gun, flying the aircraft is more like flying the gun itself. The GAU-8 Gatling gun, more aptly named the Tank Buster, is the staple gun used by the A-10 pilots to neutralize ground targets. The PGU-14B armor-piercing incendiary rounds used by the Gatling gun are so fierce that they penetrate through heavy armor. Pilots benefit from the inherent ability of the aircraft to execute precise maneuvers at low altitudes and slow speeds. This buys more time for the pilots to identify possible threats and strategically position themselves to engage hostile targets with guns. A well-coordinated strafing run inflicts the most significant damage on the enemy while minimizing friendly fire. So when we arrive here at training, we start with an initial qualification period of just learning how to fly the A-10. From there, we build on that in order to reach full mission readiness. So we'll start with basic um, surface attack, learning how to employ the variety of different weapons that the A-10 has to offer. And from there, we move into close air support tactics, which are more specialized into the mission that we would do in a combat situation. Now, all throughout training, which is this constant learning, relearning, and uh, making us as mission ready as possible. While the Gatling gun holds so much power, only a gun fired at the desired target would do the damage. A colored parachute is displayed at a gunnery range to be used as targets for the pilots during their strafing runs. The parachute contrasts against the background, helping pilots identify the location. After identifying the target, the pilot approaches it. When the target is close by, the pilot initiates the strafing run, firing the gun in short bursts. Immediately following the strafing run, the pilot executes a strategic egress from the target area. As low altitude and slow speed increase the vulnerability of the aircraft to hostile surface-to-air missiles. While the Gatling gun is the main focus of the A-10, the aircraft can carry 16,000 pounds of mixed ordnance in eight underwing and three under fuselage hardpoints. This includes unguided general purpose bombs, such as the MK-82 and MK-84. Precision guided missiles, such as the AGM-65 Maverick for close air support. And AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles for air-to-air -air engagements, along with other rockets and bombs. Missiles could deliver pinpoint attacks on heavily guarded targets while keeping a safer distance from hostile grounds. This improves the lethality of the attack while mitigating any threats to the aircraft from surface-to-air missiles. In addition, guided missiles lower the risk of damage to friendly forces as they reach the target with extreme accuracy. In addition to using guns and missiles, the A-10 pilots should be able to operate the aircraft from austere runways whenever required. The aircraft is made to sustain harsh environments with sturdy landing gears and low-pressure tires. 
If the pilots happen to operate from austere bases with limited facilities close to the battlefields, the hands-on experience gathered from training could play a vital role. The proximity to the battlefield reduces the response time to a close air support request and increases the loiter time. This allows the Warthog to remain airborne while helping troops on the ground. The number one reason we have to do this as pilots is because um, our thought is always for the troops on the ground. In order to continue to force project and to continue to drop bombs and protect uh, the troops on the ground, we're going to have to find other suitable means with which we can continue our combat operations. So they would literally truck in the bombs, the bullets, all the things they need to, to austere environments like an old airfield, a highway, whatever have you, so that we can continue to operate and, and ultimately save lives on the ground. Successful execution of an aerial sortie is predominantly backed by the pilot's abilities. With that said, the stepping stone to becoming a proficient pilot is the initial training. The role played by trainer aircraft such as the Northrop T-38 Talon is truly indispensable as they enhance the efficacy of pilot training. The T-7A Red Hawk is an all-new advanced trainer, planned to enter service in the near future. Manufactured by Boeing and Saab, the Red Hawk is about to replace the Northrop T-38 Talon as the most advanced supersonic jet trainer. The aircraft is brimming with synthetic training capabilities, backed by augmented reality, virtual reality, and artificial intelligence. The Red Hawk is a tribute to the Tuskegee Airmen, a group of African-American airmen who served in World War II and are well known for their exceptional airmanship. Apart from the next level training experience offered by the T-7A, its manufacturing process employs cutting edge technologies such as digital engineering. Virtual prototyping was a prominent feature that allowed the prototype to be tested in a short period of time. This expedites the design phase without needing a physical prototype. The manufacturers are expected to commence low rate initial production by 2025. With the aid of computer-driven manufacturing techniques, Boeing will achieve a 75% improvement in first-time engineering quality compared to other conventional airplanes. Currently, Boeing is in the midst of conducting flight tests on the Red Hawk. Critical tests such as the in-flight shutdown and restart of its engine have been conducted with successful outcomes. During the test, pilots shut down the airplane's only engine at an altitude of 20,000 feet, then wait for 48 seconds to restart the engines. Flight test power is off. Caution, caution. Boost low. While the test primarily proved the integrity of the General Electric F404 engine, test engineers also assessed the behavior of subsystems in response to an engine failure. Some aircraft are engineered to serve the dual roles of training and fighting. The AT-6 Wolverine by Beechcraft is one such aircraft with versatile multi-mission capabilities. The Wolverine is a light attack and armed reconnaissance aircraft based on the T-6 trainer. Among the many mission capabilities of the AT-6, the aircraft can provide close air support. 
as an aircraft intended to provide support for ground troops, it should possess enhanced maneuverability at low speeds. The Wolverine remains highly maneuverable, even with a full loadout on its seven hardpoints, which increases the chances of survivability in combat scenarios. The aircraft can endure a maximum G load of six, while tight turns that involve sustained G loads will be handled perfectly. The experience gathered from an aircraft of this nature would be more advantageous for a pilot when transitioning to a more advanced aircraft. Pilots are the backbone of the Air Force. The process involved in training a pilot is so intricate and challenging. The pinnacle of such a steep learning curve is a pilot who would serve the country and save people from all sorts of adversaries. With the advent of leading-edge technologies in trainer aircraft, pilot training is expected to reach new heights that will endow the nation with the best pilots ever. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.